Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Throwback Thursday. Of course, we are here with the skeleton crew coming around the bin. Uh, we've been together since isolation. This is nearing the end of week eight, by the way. I was, I was thinking about this this morning. So we're almost 40 streams in, which is going to put us near the 200-hour mark. If we end up getting to 1,000 hours, there's going to be an insane party happening. All right, uh, I'll be there. Speaking of insanity, today we are throwing back to the Mythos CCG, which is a, a game that came out in 1996, I believe, uh, during the very early days of what was known now as the CCG Gold Rush. A magic hit in 93, late 93. 94 came around, people started working on products. 95, Middle Earth CCG came out. Ni by 96, it was like people are hitting it. It was the rush. Yeah, and so this, the Mythos CCG, as you might imagine if you know anything about uh, the Mythos word, I think, the keyword there, this is definitely a Lovecraft-inspired, based uh, game that is an IP that is available for anybody to use. Yeah, uh, this one came out of Chaosium, and they did the Call of Cthulhu role-playing for so long. And I think this was an extension of that early on. And they are the ones we were talking about the other day that have the, the um, trademark on the yellow sign. Oh, that most people use the real illegally, deal sign, the one that we one didn't. Of, yeah, one of the reasons we made a different one for nice. our Carcosa Doom tokens. That's awesome. I didn't yeah. know that was the same the same group. So, classic CCG based on Lovecraft, and again, we've been playing a ton of a game called the Arkham Horror. Yeah, I love that card back. You want to show it up on the screen? Yeah, check out this card back, guys. We've been playing a ton of the Arkham Horror. That's just classic '90s, honestly. You can't make this up. <laughs> like I posted a picture of it. Just like the the color wheel on that is amazing. It's good. Um. <laughs> But it's... We have no idea what we're doing. No, not at all. <laughs> uh, and I want to shout out here, Mike. He, he sent the Raw Deal decks we used last week, uh, the Raw, De Raw Deal CCG from 2000. And now we're playing this. I uh, sent some other games as well, so we'll keep previewing those. So shout out to you. Thank you for sending those. That's really helpful and awesome. Um, so we're going to be walking through, and this is the kind of thing where, like, I, I saw someone in the comments say, I owned, I owned starters for this but couldn't make heads or tails of it, so I just never did it. Um, and on reading the rules, I watched a couple of videos. I read through the rules a couple of times. Mike was kind enough to put together a, like, here's some stuff you should know list. <laughs> um, so we're just going to be wading through it. If you've played the game, feel free. I mean, in all our throwbacks, there's a handful we've been really having to learn. Uh, it's been super helpful having chat on and telling us, hey, that's not exactly how that works, or here's how this, this works. But if you're watching this either now live or in the future, many potentially years from now, <laughs> um, to learn this game, get heads or tails of it, hopefully this is super helpful and you can learn along with us and, and watch this game unfold. I will say, from just looking at it, <laughs> I think if I hadn't been playing Arkham Horror, I wouldn't be as interested. But we've been playing Arkham Horror, which is also Lovecraft-inspired, um, and it's its own like IP and universe and whatnot. But this makes kind me feel is. a similar way in the like, the way that I look at an old Lord of the Rings game compared to like more modern Lord of the Rings games, where it's like yeah. it's got that '90s air about it. So I'm, I'm excited. This has about got this. everything you're used to seeing. I mean, there's Miskatonic cards. We're looking at, uh, you know, the kind of the Arkham vibe. We've got essentially sanity and education as stats. So sanity is still a big part of the universe. I mean, it, just like in Arkham, where you're you're worried about your sanity and you're trying not to not to lose it, which defeats your investigator. We've got these just incredible little portfolios here of our characters. I'm going to zoom in on that. This is another thing that you would not expect. So it's like this. It's a story deck, allies, and it's just giving you a key of it's where to put stuff. Yeah, it gives you the key of where your cards go, and then it also you have a double-sided to depend on who you want to play as your investigator here. Oh, that's actually very true. I, don't, I opened it assuming this was just the cover. Yeah, but so that's you a get, person. You get two investigators, uh, and I. how are they different? Well... This one knows English and has a different education and sanity and max hand size and stuff. And this one knows German, the mad German inventor, has a different education, sanity, et cetera, stack. Yeah. And you can only interpret tomes in your language. So that's another thing. So we've got we've to basically find tomes and put spells on them. And then we'll cast those spells. And it's one of these games where uh, people, it was, it was great. It was a, a bubbling of interesting uh, concepts ultimately happening all at once. And the tournaments for this were four players, right? That was, that was how it was supposed to go. So it was kind of an around the table game, like uh, the early vampire game as well was like that. It was a multiplayer element. And ulti like what you're trying to do is, is go on your own adventures that your deck is filled with. And you've you've done that for a let, particular let, reason. Let me pull up an example. Pull up an adventure I, for we'll you. We'll test this out too. So we have all the cards coming in that should help you follow along. 
Let me find. Uh, I'm just looking for one. I got one they're for me. Back. All right. I have one called Stand Against the Order, and we'll see if this thing comes up. I'll take a look. I'll Let me know if it gets check. there. I'm just going to start reading it. Uh, it's an adventure you'll see, uh, and then it, it just has text. Good, yeah. It says, you and two steadfast allies are, in, in parentheses, at first, greatly impressed by the strange magnetic charisma of Barn Barnabas Marsh, Jeremiah Brewster, and Robert Marsh. In parentheses, two of these three. So, basically, the way this is working, this is just classic. I mean, this awesome. is not the way 90s rolled. This uh, was trying to be a role-playing game as a card game, by the way. Absolutely. So, it says, you and two steadfast allies. So, that's telling me that I, plus two other uh, allies that I can put into play, have to have steadfast for me to, to get, complete this adventure. Then we were impressed by these three people. So then I literally have to find and play two of those three. Yeah. And it doesn't tell me that. It just says two of those three. You it doesn't do say it, yeah. uh, Leaders of the Order. You soon notice evidence of the Innsmouth look among their f followers. So Innsmouth, the next expansion I, I, for Arkham Yeah, War. that's right. Next, nuts? I, I need to find Innsmouth look, whatever that means. And then it says stealthy investigator investigation of the Marsh Mansion and the Marsh Refinery. I'm also assuming I have to stealthily investigate those somehow. Reveals convincing evidence of their terrible customs and foul plot for humankind. In a desperate attempt to get rid of the world, the, to rid the world of this menace, you dynamite the esoteric order of Dagon. So I have to find dynamite, and then I have to blow up esoteric order of Dagon. And I have no idea how to achieve that, so this yeah. game is going to be hilarious. I, I, in reading about it and people talking about it online, it's like you need to know what your adventures are trying to do to even know what you're trying to play. Yeah, I'm just, I, that's not how I, I don't care. I just want to <laughs> make it happen, and this just game might take a long time. The game yeah, I just want to start out figuring goes, out how to yeah. function it. And then we'll go from there. So, Mike, if you're watching right now, I didn't realize this was two-sided. I imagine you had this folded to the side I needed. Should I be playing the adventurous dilettante? <laughs> dilettante? <laughs> or the proud Prussian submariner? See, I already know. See, so I have a tome in here that's German. I bet that I'm supposed to play the German mad scientist. 100%. Let me find... Do your tomes have a, have a, a language on them? What's that tome, just so we can see it? That is the... Oh, it's in German. <laughs> Unasprechlichen Colton. How do you spell Sorry, the first Bryce. five letters? U N A U S S Unasprechlichen Colton, which probably means something hilarious in German. Yeah, we got it. We, we pulled it up. Nailed it. Uh, I have a tome in German. That means I'm probably going with the. Uh, Any German people? Proud Prussian submariner. That makes he sense. He knows German and yeah. not English, so yeah, I'm going to be sense. very confused. With this yeah, I've game. got nothing but German tomes. It looks like so that that kind of solves that problem. And then your allies can also uh, figure out your tomes. So strange. This is amazing. I mean, this is insane. I, let's just get weird. I, I, Zach and I, we, you know, you can do your best. Even when you're learning this probably, what, uh, 20, 20 years ago now? What was it, 96, 2006, 2016? 24. Can you believe that? 24 years ago. So this reminds me of when we would be younger learning a card game, and it's like, it's never clean. You, and you just got to dive in. You and play just and you ask questions it. and you read the rule book and you learn things and then you read the rule book after you play to learn more things and then you get something wrong for a couple months until a very particular card. <laughs> so you go to a tournament. It's like, well, like, like a card will like in parentheses reference something. It's like, wait, that can't work how we thought it's worked if that card's playable. Yeah. And then you have to go look and you're like, oh my goodness, that's how that functions. <laughs> So, anyways, I'm the proud Prussian submariner, and if I look at my, I know German, if I look at my investigator card, I have an education of 8 and a beginning sanity of 15. So, I have my 15 here. I don't know if you guys can read that on the stream. I bet you can. Can you read that? Just a little bit. What about this Would one? this be better? I bet that's better. Getting it closer. Um, and then, the start of, start of the game, what we're going to do, to determine who goes first, you start with whoever has lower sanity. So what's your sanity? 14. Set? So mine's 15. Yours is lower. You're going to go first. If that was a tie, you would actually see who has the highest education. Very cool. Okay. Um, and then you go from there. And you'll see a few other stats on my card, at least, on the uh, proud Prussian submariner. Maximum sanity is 20, so that's my cap. My hand is 13 cards. That's what I'll start with. My minimum is 4, and my maximum is 5. So the cool thing at the end of the round, this is I haven't really ever seen this, which is <laughs> normally you have to discard down to or draw up to a certain number. Yeah. In this case, it's a range. So depending yeah. on your character, if it was like 6 to 10. Mine's 3 to 5. Yeah, so you can literally, if you had 10, you know, 10 cards in your hand, you could discard down to anywhere from 3 to 5, and then you draw back up to your hand size after that's over. Nice. Also worth noting, most of these decks have 52 cards. So with a 13 hand size, that's literally a quarter of your deck. Yeah. Yeah, which yeah. is a lot. People weren't afraid to burn through decks back in the day, no. you know? Mm -hmm. It was just shuffle it up and keep going, kind of the idea. 
Uh, okay, cool. Mike, that makes sense. Education for the beginning of the game and then sanity for rounds two and further. Because sanity is a stat that actually is going to move as we do damage okay, to each other. So it, you still have the lowest education. Maybe that. Yeah, just go well, first. It would be you? highest education. But I can't go first yet. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to draw 13. <laughs> ah, yes. Classic. And also, it, one thing I do like about this is that Actions are one 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 one. Oh, I'll move this. Is that okay? Is that what you want? Yeah, it's fine. Uh, so uh, there's other games where you have to do a whole lot at once and decide a whole lot at once. You don't. That's not how this works. No, you just make start, one decision. So from what I remember reading, the first thing I want to do is try to see if I have a location in my hand, which I don't. Uh, so I think I'm supposed to reshuffle my hand until I have a location. <laughs> Uh, there's a mulligan roll, actually, um, and I, th I think... I'm not going to do none of that. I think I literally... I'm just going to grab a location okay. and discard grab a one. card yeah, yeah, grab to one. make this simpler. But I think normally you would actually lose a sanity to, to shuffle back in and draw because you need to have a starting location. Okay, check this out. Uh, let's pull up the, the Sun Worshipper. This is an adventure I've got in my hand, and I feel like I'm just going to start trying to do this. Um, travel by camel to three different locations in the Middle East <laughs> and meet two allies who speak Arabic. They speak of an ancient legend foretelling of a coming drought where the searing eye of God will be revealed in a shaft of direct sunlight. Using a second camel card, hasten to the great temple at Karnak. There summon a fire vampire in propitiatory worship of Umun Ra, the sun god. Classic. Amazing. Okay, so I need to be traveling by camel to different locations, meeting allies who speak Arabic, have some kind of a drought card that I need to play, direct sunlight is going to be useful, and then uh, camel to the great temple where I'm going to summon a fire vampire. All right, that sounds like a plan. Tale is all the time. Uh, I, I mean, it sounds like a couple of my childhood summers, uh, roughly. Um, so the other thing worth noting, we start in the countryside and it's daytime. That's the default mode. So okay. if cards are referencing, is it night? Or like, are you in a city or whatever? The default is you're in the countryside and it's day. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the Esoteric Order of Dagon. Uh, it's in Inn's Mouth. You can see this location will come up. It says location along the side with a green background with Inn's Mouth next to it. Under it, it says city, society, and tome, uh, which means all of those are uh, usable. And I think my story deck technically goes here, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna back up a little bit. Yeah. Um, and a couple other things on the bottom left, you'll see the minus one. Um, so when, I, when that resolves, I'm going to get a minus one. Now, I think the first location comes in ready, but a cool mechanic is when you're traveling from location to location, a location will actually enter tapped on top. And then on my next turn, it will actually ready. And that's when the sanity bonus would apply. Yeah, I think you have to. So there's an action that is literally rotate a location card. So you just pay an action and to travel to it, I think, and flip it right up. Looks like... So rotate a location card, which it looks like. So do the first ones maybe, yeah, first play outside in daytime, not countryside. First one is ready, correct. Okay, cool. So okay. you play a location. So I play it. It's got a minus one. So I go down to 14. And then it says, may use this gate. So this green icon <laughs> is a gate. Hmm, good to know. Um, on a location. And that's where you can actually summon monsters. Now, when you, when you play monsters, they're actually going to come into your threat area here. And they're going to go face down. So you know what they are, but your opponent doesn't mm -hmm. know. We'll resolve the monsters at the end. Um, you also know a couple other things, like this little red icon here on the, the location. That means it's indoors. Yeah, okay. Right? It's just a little, and there's a water symbol, which means it's near water. <laughs> of course it in does. In case you need something to reference, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then it says, may use this gate more than once when any storm is in play, but must pay this card's sanity cost for each subsequent gate used. You may remain here for one turn and bury one phobia. So I can only stay for one turn. And I can bury a phobia, which right. if you had a phobia on me, I could dump it under. Okay. So you're going to need to do a little heal up there. Okay. Uh... Now, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> M a lot. We, we don't know a lot. Yeah, I Zach. don't know. It says I can stay for one turn. Can I hang out here, or do I have to go somewhere else, even if I don't have somewhere else? May. Let's play this card. Sanity costs each subsequent gate use. You may remain here for one turn and bury one phobia. Maybe that's just a single ability. So I spend my time remaining at this location and burying a phobia. Okay. That's like an action that you can do. Stay here, bury a phobia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've seen that in the rule book a couple of times. Wait, yeah. That makes sense. Okay. So I'm going to start my Cairo journey in 
a very simple... Uh, Justin saying, oh man, these rules are bananas. An, a very simple place. How about the Spice Bazaar here? Um, we're going to call it the Musky City Business Tome Artifact. You're in Cairo. We're on different sides of the world. I'm in Cairo. I've got the sunshine. That means you're outside. A, just a simple Spice Bazaar. Okay. All right. So then it comes back to me. <laughs> Um, but this is what I'm saying. At least we can like function through this. Okay, so cool. So Tony's saying travel within the same city does not require the location to come in tapped. So if I have another Cairo card, I can just play it ready. Right? There it so is. I'm just moving around if, Cairo. If it's not in the same city, it's going to come in tapped. Cool, Tony. Thank you. Okay, now that was the easy play. Now what's your next? Now what's your next thing here? <laughs> this is amazing, honestly. Uh. Let me look. I'm looking for a tome because I can play it here, and I feel like that's good. Although, tomes are for spells, and I don't have any spells, I don't yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we won't tome, but I will play an ally. Where does it tell me? It says over here. Barnabas Marsh. I remember reading his name on that wind oh, commission. Oh, is that Silas related? Look at, look at his face. He's it like totally a little alien is. guy. Wow, a corrupt cultist. He knows English, though. I need English because I only speak German, so we're going to really right uh, on. Okay. miss each other. But he's got a minus one red card, so he comes into play. He says In's Mouth on him, so I'm playing him in In's Mouth, right? Matching, keying him, as they would say in Middle-earth CCG. He's got a minus one red stat on the bottom left, so I'm going to lose a sanity for that. But then he's got this uh, value on the top left. I believe that's his point value because he says it adds one point to the value of this card if your investigator has the Jewelry of the Deep Ones. Okay. Gold. So if I play Jewelry of the Deep Ones, he actually um, becomes worth two points. Okay. So, and then the points, is that what you apply when you go to combat? So Is that the big number where it's like that's what I can block or defend or attack with or something? It's a really good question. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like you need a big number to do that with, so I'd imagine so that's the only I th one. I think that's what that is, um, but... I also believe... So yeah, like, Mike says basically his combat stat. Okay, cool. So his combat stat's plus one if I have Jewelry of the Deep One, and the only points you score to win the game are from your adventure cards. So the other thing is that if you score, when you go to play an action to spend an adventure card to score it, if that takes you over 20, the game's immediately over. Okay. The other way the game ends is if one of us goes insane by running out of sanity, yeah. we total up points and see who wins. Yeah, okay. Easy way. What's up, Tanuki? Yeah, I'm glad I'm not banned from my con contentious Blade Runner 2047 comments last night. <laughs> <laughs> no way. We welcome it. Okay, I've got another... I've also got another uh, Everlasting Life thing here, too. Um, corrupt Ally, Tome, Skull, Resurrection. I mean, none of that's happening here. Um, you're at that location. How about... How about I play, and important to note, what we're talking about, it has to say city, and it has to be in the Cairo region to travel without having to tap the location. Or turn, or exhaust, or what have you. Um, let's just build. That's where we're at, my, my friend. But if none are in play, then it is day. Very night events. Okay, so I can turn it to day. So got day stuff. Physics says there's so much card on, text on these cards. I was going to say there's so much card on these texts. That's funny. All right. Let's play Arthur Monroe All right. as an ally. Now, can you have more than one ally out? Or is Absolutely. There... Okay. There's no limit. So we've got any number of allies and then allies with weapons even potentially. Okay. I'm just going to put my deck way out here. Yeah, because we this don't just need to two. see it. We look like little uh, spaceships fighting each other. Yeah. Arthur Monroe comes in here. Steadfast reporter knows English. Uh, looks a bit Frankenstein's monstery, and is two cost wallets in place. Subtract one from the minimum number of cards you can keep in your hand, not cumulative with other allies that also lower your minimum. So my minimum is now two, mm -hmm. so I can ditch a lot of cards. Wow, I'm learning some stuff. All right, let's I'm do just this. Highlighting towards a cliff. I don't let's even do know this. where I'm supposed to be. I'm gonna play an event. Discover secret cache. Affects your investigator. Immediately play an artifact or tome card regardless of current location's attributes. You or your allies must still know the proper languages if need needed, then bury this card. So I believe bury refers to putting it face down under your current location. That's how you bury something. It's okay. not discarded. I'm with it. Um, so it's not there yet. So Seems I get to, like a bury mechanic. I get to immediately play something. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm actually going to organize my hand by like type of cards. That's going to help me. That's the f exactly what I did. David Dunlap saying, I usually watch y'all's X-Wing content. This is a change. Yeah, this is a heck of a change. 
We've never seen this game in 96. Now, what's fascinating is this game won a 1996 Origins Best Card Game Award, and Zach and I are actually going to be hosting Origins Online this year. So it's kind of a cool bridge of like, man, this stuff's been around forever. We've come full circle. And I think we're getting really a lot older. Yes. You know? That is what is exactly what has happened. This is from 96, and that's more than two decades ago. And that's like when I think about as a normal young time for myself. Discover the Secret Cache is going to let me play Jewelry of the Deep Ones. Oh, my gosh. That's artifact. what so he gets, he gets plus one. So I'm going to bury this card under the location. And... Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go grab some tokens to mark these okay, plus cool. ones yeah, yeah. so that we don't have to keep counting them. Token on. What up, Tresmillion? All right, now, Mike. Question for you: If you've got uh, Actually, here, I'm Mike Cook, if you're out there, um, thanks, Stephen. Uh, do you is there a what's the general kind of game plan for a, a game of Mythos? Like, are you, are you just trying to rush to your quests? Should you be playing all the cards in your hands if you can? Are you, like, is there any sneaky stuff that we need to know about that maybe kind of uh, puts you on the right track for what, what makes it I, a good play or a bad play? Or? I think something to think about is that if either of us pass in a row or if one of us passes two times in a row, mm -hmm. the turn ends and we have to discard down to our minimum maximum hand sizes. Yeah. So part of it is a tempo game where you need to get the cards out that are super important to get out because otherwise your hand's gonna get flushed. What's up, Pete? What's up, Chris? Tres million, what's up? No, this is not a co op game. This is technically a four player. You can play it four players uh, against each other. Which is interesting to see so many people. Um, I'm gonna do this. He's got an extra strength here. Um, so many people in the CCG space, because Magic was obviously one on one up front and really just in general. And then very quickly you started having all these games come out where you could scale. I think that was, it was like, Probably the, you know how like uh, legacy games became the end thing for a minute? Mm -hmm. It was like, ah, we will make a multiplayer CCG successful. Yep. I almost did it. <laughs> okay, so Mike's saying, because your story deck resets when you complete an adventure, don't bother with cards that don't help with your current adventure. So I basically choose one in my hand, and I'm saying this is the one that I'm going for. I've currently got two in my hand. Assuming you have one, yep. Yeah, no worries, Mike. Please feel free to work. Okay. Well, I'm going to go with... The, the one that brought me here. How about the... Uh, this one requires me to get two Steadfast Allies, a Corrupt Ally, a Tome, a Skull, a Resurrection Spell. It seems easier, but go with the Camel that brought you. I'm going to play Camel. As they say. It affects my Investigator. Travel by land, and I can immediately play a new location in the same region, so a Cairo location, right side up on top of my story deck. Okay. I'll do it. And I'm going to play How about Luxor? I feel like that's too important. Let's go mm. to the Mosque of Ibn Tulun. Boom. And then once I play an event, does it go under the story it deck? It gets buried under your story. Because basically we're going to have to unload all of this stuff and say, look, I've completed my objective. Yeah. Right? I traveled by camel to a location. Okay. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure even if like if Barnabas left play, for example, he would usually get buried. Yeah, go to the story deck, right? Because we got to realize the story that we told. We're so I just story. traveled by camel to the mosque of Ilbun. All right, mine. Maybe it's even in order like this. Huh. All right, all right. Yeah, Matt Mattis, I agree. It's even more enjoyable when you just have no idea what's happening. Just like it's, we're just telling a story. We'll see how it goes. And then Brian asking, how do you track your accomplishments? That's what the story deck is doing. So I've got a quest in my hand. Let's look at um, the Sun Worshipper. Is an adventure I've got in my hand. It's a, a plus ten, so it's a lot of points, and it tells me a bunch of things I have to do. And so I'm going to stack up throughout the game. All of the things that I'm doing are either going to go face up or face down in the story deck stack. Also, apparently, all cards in the story deck are face up. Oh, good. Like this side. Okay, that so makes sense. No, no hidden. So in this case, like I'm telling this story, and if I can get in all the cards that this Sun Worshipper card needs me to do, and if I can tell this story, then I will score 10 points. And Zach's going to be trying to keep me from doing that by playing things face down in his Mythos Threat area. So does this face up? Yeah. Anything that's buried is face up. Yeah. <clears throat> Secret cache. 
Okay. All right, you ready? Also, this is crazy. Uh, the deck building rules, you have to have at least 20 points worth of adventure cards in your deck. But then every card that that uh, adventure card references has to go in your deck, which is interesting. That is fascinating. All right, I'm going to play Obsessive Compulsive. It affects my opponent's investigator. It's an event. It's a phobia. So this attaches to you, basically. At the beginning of each round, you lose one sanity point and reshuffle your Mythos deck and all, all discards. So when we like get to the end of the round and we start back up, you're going to lose a sanity until this phobia is gone. Okay. I'm phobying you. Don't you phobie me? Uh, all right, well, how about this? I'm going to put this here so I keep in mind. Yep. How about you get wrecked with your own obsessive compulsive? Oh, come on. Come on. All right. Mine? Yeah. Let's play. Yeah, Echo, it kind of is like a versus Arkhamura. We have no idea. It's from 96. I'm going to play a Randolph Carter. He's a steadfast dreamer. Remember, I need two steadfasters. Uh, he knows English and French, and he says as long as he is chosen as defending uh, ally, he raises the card value of all other steadfast defending allies by one per card. Point per card. All right. Sounds good to me. Per card of what? Per card of card. I don't know what it means by per <laughs> card, but we'll get there. Um, Matt is saying I was one when this released. Invisible during the day. I wonder if that means they can't do anything like in the mythos. Invisible phase. means that the damage isn't blockable by allies. So I need it to be nighttime if I, that's a te the text is as you read it. You All can right. say the card so people can see what it is. Yeah, it is I don't a know what it's gonna fire do. vampire. Looks like you have. Mo oh, that's the thing you're trying to summon. Yeah, but I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in the mythos threat area there. All right. Wait, monsters require gates, and that's what this is? Yep, you're at a gate. Okay, so I summoned it through a gate. Totally good. Um, all right, I'm going What's to... What's up, Chris Ainsworth? Glad, you, glad you're here as well. I'm going to play Arthur Monroe. He's also a steadfast reporter. He knows English. Oh, I have one of my own. Yep. Arthur's got, over you here. You know exactly what he does. You've got him, too. You're, he's paying. He's taking money from I both sides. I think two steadfast. I remember Barnabas and Randolph getting mentioned. <laughs> and I know something about Dagon got mentioned. I don't have my win condition card, so I'm just playing <laughs> blind right now. Travel by camel to three different locations. Okay, so if I have no more camel things... What up, Chris? Welcome back. I can't play it. I wonder if there's a way for me to recycle events. Oh, I was supposed to resolve this. Oh, also when you use a gate, you flip this upside down. And you can only use the gate once a turn. Okay. I didn't resolve this text. I should have resolved this text, yeah? Yeah, sorry. You get plus four. And then I reveal the top card of my Mythos thing. Apply any sanity losses or gains. Oh, no. Indicate on the card. It's then, Abdul. Then discard it. He knows Arabic. And this is one of the ones I needed. Discard Oh, it. and then it says you remain here for a turn and bury one phobia. So I can so, always spend a turn and just stay cool. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to do that. My next action is going to be that for sure. Well, you know what I'm going to do. Um, so I played the vampire, yeah, and then you played the ally. Mm -hmm. And now it's back to me, I guess, technically. I was just resolving that. Uh, I'm going to use this. I'm going to hang out in the mosque, and I'm going to bury a phobia. Is this buried to you I or to it, me? I think it should, I'm going to guess me, but if that's wrong, I'm going to put it sideways just so we remember. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, well... I like Barnabas. I don't want him go anywhere, to go anywhere. So, oh, Chris, that's really good. I'm glad to hear that. The World Wonders release for Champions starting with Hulk in August, according to the FAQ or the Q&A today. So they're going to catch back up by so August? June, or July, August. So they'll probably do what? Black Widow, Doctor Strange, Doctor Hulk. Strange, and then Hulk in August. So I assume that everyone else is going to get delayed on Hulk until we're caught up. But that's great. Um, I, consistency good. and communication are very important there. What's up, David Thorpe? I'm glad you love the streams, and I'm glad you're a Marvel Champion subscriber. That's great. Thank you. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play some Dynamite. Mm -hmm. You got the Dynamite Blast. Three Remember, to every yeah, enemy, I yeah. Need, yeah. <laughs> I need the Dynamite. Uh, it's a weapon. Add six points to the ally's value. One weapon per ally. If ally is buried, also bury this card. Discard both Dynamite and ally after use in combat. Wow, you got yourself a bit of, a, bit of an engine there. 
So wait, if I get to 20 sanity, the game is over? No, 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 no. that's your okay. max. Okay. If you get to zero, the game is over. Wait, I knew the game was over then. Um. Uh, Mike's saying it buries in the deck of the player that played it. Okay. Yeah, which was you. And yeah. the story deck, right? Not the deck deck? Yeah. <laughs> I think every, everything's got to bury in the story deck so that we can actually have the objectives. I think bury yeah. re refers to that. What's that bad boy? This is the Grecian Lykathos artifact affects ally from the past. So while it's in play, I can use the resurrection spell to play an ally card from the past. You must be in the proper location to summon him or her. I think from the past might mean from my discard pile. I'm just guessing that that's, That's what that, that would mean, because it's 96. All right, I'm going to play an event uh, that is Beatri Beatrice is released from the attic. <laughs> 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 it's creepy art, honestly. <laughs> Choose an ally up to four points in value, including their weapon that opponent that your opponent must bury, then bury this card. So I'm going to bury him. He's buried? Yep. Be Beatrice came from the attic and got him. Yikes. I wish I had a monster to summon at this portal of doom. Um, I'm going to pass. I'll also pass. Okay, here end we of go. The round. So we'll get to the end of the round phase, uh, which is super fascinating. Discard down to between your minimum and maximum. I have six. I can go between two and five. I can, or three and five. Now. I can do four or five. I have four, so I have to keep these. And I'm going to draw back up to 13. One, two, three, four. Now, do you discard the ones, or do you shuffle them back in? I think you discard. Okay. And if we're wrong about that, chat will let us know very quickly. And then at some point, we're going to have the opportunity to reshuffle our once we're out of deck, it all reshuffles and we go back again, right? Uh, that sounds about right. <laughs> it sounds like something that uh, would happen. What you can also do is you can oh, wait, hold on. We've got combat. A, you can lose a sand. Yeah, we're not there yet. So the first thing you do is discard. Uh -uh. Oh, we don't draw back up yet. End of round oh. is discard. So we go to combat next before we do any of that. Mm. So combat. <laughs> Let's see how this works. I've seen how it works yeah. in as an idea. So once card play has ended by passing, combat begins. Even if there are no threats present at the start of the combat phase, combat consists of several, several steps. Commit monster cards to attack your opponent. It start, first of all, it starts with the investigator with the lowest current sanity and then proceeds to the left. Who has the lowest current sanity? It's Me. Sad. Commit monsters to attack your opponent. All monsters in a threat must be used. This is, I'm the only one that's going to be able to do this. Place them face down, aim towards your target. If playing against more than one opponent, the player chooses, etc. So... It's pointing at you. I could point it at other people, but I'm pointing it at you. Get ready. Then uh, commit allies. Once all players have committed their threats, each commits allies to defend against a directed threat. These are your defending allies. Place defending allies face up in a stack behind your attacking monsters. You don't currently have any attacking monsters, so place them wherever you want. All right. So you committed your monsters, I commit my allies? Yep. I'm Just push going, forward what you want to defend. I'm going with. to defend with Randolph Carter. He's right. steadfast. He's a dreamer. Uh, <laughs> he says as long as he is chosen as a defending ally, he raises the card value of all other steadfast defending allies by one. Okay, I'll actually defend with Randolph and Arthur. Okay. Um, so he's going to increase the Arthur value by three. Oh, very nice. So he's a five? Oh, no, no, by, by one, sorry. Okay, up to a three. Up to a three. Uh, and then at this point, you can also add allies with enchanted weapons to directed threats at this time. So that's where the secret enchanted weapons come in. Then we can cast spells or use artifacts. Once all monsters and allies are committed, each player can cast any one spell or use an artifact that is currently available that is face up and right side up. When all investigators have had a chance to do those things, uh, then we move on. Then we finally reveal monsters. Monsters and allies are now faced off against each other and are divided into separate battles. Resolve battles beginning with the investigator with the lowest sanity. So here's a fire vampire. Let's see what this does. Mm -hmm. Each player resol resolves all battles that involve him. So imagine there's four players around the table. You might be involved in multiple battles. Uh, okay. Players involved in a battle look at their monsters and arrange them in any order from left to right. Lay down your threat so everyone can see, immediately declaring uh, for monsters that can be either visible or invisible, and resolving immediately the effects of events in play on the monsters revealed. So this is a fire vampire. It is invisible during the day. It is the day. 
Uh, add one point to it if you're in a forest. Are you in a forest? Now, did you pay for that when you played it? No, I didn't. I think when I flip it up, I have to pay for it. Okay. Anytime a card flips up or is, is face up, you got to pay for it. Okay. Okay. If questions about the sequencing of special effects arise, we'll never, ever get into it. Uh, the monsters then engage in the cosmic battle. So if you're playing monsters against me, I'm playing monsters against you. Our monsters fight, and then whoever wins that goes on to fight the allies. Yeah. Just perfect. And you're weakened by however much they hate you by. Yeah. Uh, outside of the scope of normal human perception, it's important for you to realize that. Once resolved, the remainder of the victor's threat value passes to the human plane of existence to do sanity damage to the loser's defending allies and investigator. Okay, so we tally the value of the threat in the upper left corner, plus any bonuses, tell your opponent the value, and then everything absorbs sanity loss done by the monsters is battling, one point per value listed. Okay. Then the allies defend. So you have nothing. So three is coming in. Three, yeah, and three I, threats they coming don't in. do anything to you because you're invisible. That's correct. Well, so far, we haven't even gotten to the maybe they would. There's an assault section, which is coming up. So allies defend. If your threat has not been countered by monsters, then allies defending against that opponent will now in turn absorb one point per point value listed on the allied card. You determine the order in which your defending allies absorb the sanity loss. An ally absorbs as much as it can before sanity loss can be applied to another ally. So technically, I would absorb all three with Arthur. So I think good. you being invisible creates a problem. Assault. If your opponent's investigator is in the exact same current location as your investigator, then allies defending must attack as well. These assaulting allies are not considered to be part of their respective threats. So total any remaining point value from each threat after the cosmic battle. So that's three. Add it to the value of the defending allies of the appropriate player. We've added three here. Compare totals of both players. Monsters and allies now in turn absorb one point per point of opposition as normal. Then any remaining damage, uh, subtract it from your investigator's current sanity. And then bury the lost. Uh, bury in the story deck all cards from your threat, including monsters, cultists, and allies bearing enchanted weapons, whether or not they were eliminated during combat. Your opponent must do the same. Bury any allies who absorbed any amount of sanity loss. Wow, that's insane. So all cards from your threat, so me, monsters, cultists, and allies, whether or not they were eliminated during combat. So once you use it, it gets buried no matter what. Yep. Yeah. And then your opponent does the same, if you had any of your mystic threat stuff. And then you bury allies who absorb sanity loss. Any amount of sanity loss. So Arthur absorbs sanity loss, fire vampires. Oh, did, you, did you run into the word invisible? No. I think that's going to matter more when our monsters are fighting. I don't think allies fight monsters, mm. if, I'm, if I'm looking at it correctly. And then it's the end of the thing. All right, so he's buried. Yeah. And that's buried. OK. And then my guess would be that um, if I'm invisible, maybe you can't absorb damage with monsters or something, or vice versa. Yeah, I thought it was you couldn't absorb it with the allies, but it might be the monster as well. That would make sense. What like, about? I don't even know. You think we'd have an FAQ on invisible? Mike says opposite. Invisible skips allies. Oh. So I think that's where, like, instead of me taking any, I just take three directly. Oh, right on. OK. And then, because I can't see you. And these guys just hang around because they didn't do anything. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. Just snuck in nice. and got me. Okay, great. Um, I also made a real great play by not <laughs> just taking an extra action I could have taken to stay there and get rid of that. So <laughs> that's going to be fun. Um, end of round. I also forgot Arthur says that Arthur Monroe, my minimum is minus one. So I'm actually going to discard a card okay. during the end of round phase. So discard, got to keep the minimum, then draw back up. What's up, Horned Rat Minis? You're not late. You're right on time. Uh, Yellow Van Camp, these are Mike Cook's uh, decks. They're built with synergy in mind, I'm sure. Just sorting by card type. Okay, so this. I feel like this is going to be important. Um, let's go here. So I'm going to hold three, which is my minimum. Discard. Boom. Discard. Flip any face up. Flip face up any face down cards. They should end up face up and right side up, ready to be used. So any spells or tomes or stuff that we had used maybe would flip up now. Now we have the voluntary lobotomy, <laughs> which is just perfect. Your investigator might occasionally suffer a terrible run of luck. None of your cards is playable. Nothing in your story deck is needed. Your sanity is plummeting, and life just sucks. 
Your best option might be to undergo a drastic operation, the voluntary lobotomy. Yikes. This at the end of the round, once per game, your investigator doesn't need to be anywhere special. Discard all cards in your story deck, except for your current location. Discard all cards in your hand. You may keep only cards in play about your investigator. Spend one sanity, reshuffle your mythos deck and all discards, then draw a new hand. So it's a full-on mid-game, whatever you want at Mulligan. Prior to drawing your new hand, you might want to reshuffle your discards back in. If you do, spend a sanity to shuffle them back in, and then draw up to uh, 13. Did it. Okay, so do I want to reshuffle? Nah, What's not What's barrier rotate geos? No idea. All not right. even in here. Then uh, we start the round with whoever has the lowest sanity, so that would be me. That's nice. So if you're losing, basically, you get the tempo. Two, three, four, five... Six, seven, eight. Then because I have this obsessive compulsive disorder, I at the beginning of each round I lose a sanity and reshuffle my mythos deck and discards. Yeah, get get dead. <laughs> get dead. Dude, I, I got the cards I need to go on an adventure here. Alright, we're gonna see it maybe. Unless <laughs> I just pass. And then pass. And this round over. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Because I yeah. can do that. Um, all right. Travel by camel to three different locations in the Middle East. I've traveled by camel to how many locations so far? Okay. They speak of an ancient legend foretelling of a coming drought. Okay, I think I've seen something like that. I'm a vampire guy. You're in the desert vampiring around. I'm desert vampiring. All right, you ready? Yeah. Let's do this. First things first. I'm going to stay here and bury that. Consider it buried. Never again. <laughs> oh, this all goes right side up, too. Yeah. OK. I get it. Everything resets. All right, now I've got to go. Um, what? Oh, and the outer god monsters come into play face up. I do remember reading that. Okay, hold on. Excuse me while I organize my cards. <laughs> Weird. It's a vampire deck that wants it to be daytime. Huh. It's the daytime vampire. Yeah. Don't you know? What could, what could be worse? Um, okay, so how about then if you're there, then uh, I'm going to travel by camel. Play a new location in the same reason, uh, in the same region. Uh, let's go to the uh, Valley of Kings. Mm. All right, mine, yours. Let me check this deck real quick, just to make sure I'm not wrong on this, because it will tell me very quickly if now, my plan has failed. I have a, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I believe okay, so, I something made me, and I want to ask Chad effectively, because like something made me think that when you put a monster face down is when you paid the sanity cost. Is that wrong, or is that actually what you do? When you put something face down? So like, particularly when you play a monster, you have to be able to pay the sanity. And like the, the thing your opponent knows is how much sanity it costs you mm. at that moment. So, so they can't like be how sure messed by up like it a, is. Yeah. That seems weird, because like, how do you... I know. How do you ever verify that they're, they're telling the truth? Dude, you just gotta It's gotta be it. when it's face up. It must be. Tony says that's true. You pay when you summon the monster. Is that when you play it face you down when you or flip when you flip up? It? Mike said you pay when you flip up. Yeah, it must be. You pay when you flip up. It's the only way card games work. Not necessarily. <laughs> Have you seen these things? <laughs> I think so. Two steadfast allies, corrupt ally, tome, skull. Tome with a skull icon. Okay, let's do this. You ready? Yeah. Ready. I'm going to play, and I believe if I have a, something that can join, I can play a monster and then join something to it immediately. You can join any number of things as long as they all share the join keywords all that right. you need. I'm going to play a monster that's joined. And you're joining one to it. Yep. Prepare to be joined. How would I ever know? See, this is what I'm saying, though. I was reading the rules. Maybe it's when you flip up that monster, you play it from your hand as a joining monster. 
Hold on. We'll, we'll, we'll see. The chat, chat will literally get to this before you get there. <laughs> what I was going to say, though, is that, like, we've been playing a lot of old CCGs, Star Wars CCG, Star Wars TCG, Middle Earth CCG, Lord of the Rings TCG, Netrunner, LCG. Um, what was that? There was another one that we did. We did, played Epic Duels, which is a classic game. Um, this definitely, from a complex... If you, as long as you have pre-con decks, I feel like this is not at, even on the same level of complication as like Miller CCG when we're playing that. And I think a huge part of that, yeah. we, we've talked about this on the podcast, but is basically the amount of information you have to remember at any one time. And it's like, there's some functional stuff you have to figure out how this works, but like I'm looking, I have to play one card. <laughs> and I, I can play a monster if it matches the location. I can, like, it's, it's not that, there's not a lot of weight I'm carrying around from turn to turn. It's true. It's true, actually. <clears throat> okay. Okay. All right. So then, how about this tasty number? Let's play a tome, uh, which is going to be here. The Unausprechlichen Kulten. Spell that for me, at least the first six letters. U-N-A-U-S-S. And that means uh, unknown cultists or uncorrupt cultists or something. We saw it from the chat earlier. Nice. Uh, I lose two sanity when I play it, so I'm going down to 15. Join me in the near single digits. And then while it's in play, and if my threat includes a living dead uh, monster, I increase the value of my threat by one. Noted. So I'm, I'm better at vampiring. Unspeakable cults. All right. Mine skis? Yeah. Hmm. So I've got a tome. I've got a Grecian uh, artifact that allows me to resurrect stuff. Oh, I'm I see. I'm in the see, Valley I of the see, Kings. I, I like this. I see what's going on now. I'm supposed to lose sanity from that, too. Insane in the membrane. What are you going to do with it? All right. I'm going to go to a new location. Um, it's in the same uh, city, Innsmouth, so it comes into play right. Is it also a city? Does it say city on it? Yeah. Yeah. City, city to business, city. tome. It's the Marsh Refining Co. <laughs> All marshes have one to their card value when this card is your current location. Wouldn't you know it? Old Barnabas Marsh over here. Uh, Mr. Marsh gets plus one when I'm at a marsh, this marsh location. Of course. Isn't that cool, man? Like, the Innsmouth expansion for Arkham is literally on the horizon. And this is what it in is. Yeah. That's what's cool. This mythos goes deep. Goes deep. Okay. And then spells come okay. in face up. On onto a tome. Onto a tome. And it can hold three spells, which is what that three is. Hmm. And this counts for two, because it has a minus two in the little bottom left, so it counts for two slots. You're getting into some, some serious business over there. I haven't appreciated the tome magic yet. Huh. Or maybe not. What is that little... Oh, what is that little yellow? There, there was a. I just saw it on the spell thing. There's like a yellow. Uh, it's spell cadet. Cannot contain more spells than its spell capacity. Okay, that's easy enough. There's only so many pages in a book, you know. That's right. That's right. Do you not pay the sanity cost when a spell is played from your hand to the tome. They're paid each time the spell is cast. Yeah, Mike's saying the sanity cost is spent every time you cast it. Okay. I've got a spell that has a red one and a yellow one, so I don't know what that means. Let me see. Uh, you can play an ally card from the best. Okay. I'm going to play uh, this resurrection spell onto my tome. Yeah, so... Well, because there's another one here that's uh, this spell. When you use that spell, it's, you get minus one. I think you get, you get plus two on this one when you use it, or does it give me minus two? It definitely says minus two, and it's yellow. We'll find out what that means when we, when we need to find out. I thought it corresponded to this yellow number in the top left. Maybe it takes up like two slots, but... I think you spell just takes up a slot. Then I saw the other thing, and I was like, well, that's not great. This is getting weird, yep. All right, all right. All right, mine? Mm-hmm. I'm going to play Captain Carl Heinrich. He's a steadfast soldier. He knows German. He's good friends with the proud Prussian sub Submariner. If I choose him as a defending ally, he raises the card value of all my other steadfast defending allies by one per card. He's got a bunch of allies. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think per card, like if I block with three steadfast allies, he raises their stat by the number of the allies that are coming out. Mm, nice. So it's plus three. 
Okay. I've heard a lot about Wyvern too, Uldrick. I'm, I'm interested in that one. The past is a keyword on allies that means you have to have cards that let you play allies from the past. Ah, oh, there you go. Like uh, Resurrection says, if I have the Grecian thing, mm. I can play an ally card from the past. Oh, that's cool. You're like summoning an ancient person. Mm-hmm. Um, how about an artifact? Let's put an artifact in here. Uh, have a little bit of this. You want to slide this way so you can see it? I can slide it. a little bit, yeah. Got just one more slot here. How about the Chime of Tezchaptal? I can affect your spell. It cost me two points when it comes into play, I believe. And then uh, it says, flip this card face down to cancel an opponent's spell that was just cast. So I can cancel one of your spells. All right. Mine? Yeah. Pass. So then I can play one more thing, and you probably pass a second time. Yeah. If I want to get out of here, that's actually really the most interactive part of this phase is basically just like figuring out how long your opponent's going to hang. Mm-hmm. <laughs> one in the mythos. You have to flip that upside down, technically. Yeah. Um, pass. So right. that's one, two passes. If we both pass in a row, or if one player passes two times in a row, the round ends. Then we go to combat. So we commit all monsters. I'm going to commit here. We have no <laughs> allies. <laughs> ah! The monsters fight, though, right? The monsters fight first, yeah. Commit monsters, commit any allies. So do I have to commit allies before the monsters reveal? I think so. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I'm going to use my steadfast cats. Um, so basically... I'm going to use Arthur. I can only use one of these, I think, because of the, what it says. It says, not cumulative with other allies that lower your minimum. This is not cumulative with other allies' command ability, so I have to choose one of these two. Okay. They both do the same thing, which is if he's chosen as a defending ally, he raises the card value of all other steadfast defending allies by one point per card. So I'm assuming that there's three cards here, so theirs is plus three. Works for me. I believe. And then uh, do we reveal the things? We have to cast spells alternating. Do you have any spells you'd like to cast? Now is when you would actually use them and spend the points. This is the only time you can cast spells? No, you can cast them okay on the actions, too. So this would be any like combat-based spells, right? Yep. Or like if you had a past ally you could summon, you could summon it now. But we're already past the commit allies phase. Mm, Wouldn't yep. work. Uh, nope. No spells. Reveal monsters. All right. And then something about them being left to right. So I have Mother Hydra here, mm -hmm. and it says adds one to the value of this card if your investigator has the jewelry of the Deep Ones, which I do. Nice. Uh, joins Father Dagon, Deep Ones, and Shagas. So this is a Deep One. Mm -hmm. Add one point to the value of this card if your opponent is in a water location. You're not. I'm in the desert, Add man. one point cumulative if your investigator has the jewelry of the Deep Ones. Joins Father Dagon, Mother Hydra, Deep Ones, and Shagas. So this is plus one from Mother Hydra. And then this is plus one because mm -hmm. I have the jewelry. So this is a four and this is a two. Okay, let's see how we lay them out here. Uh, combat, we reveal monsters. We can arrange them in any order from left to right. That happens before we reveal them. Lay down your threats so everyone can see immediately declaring for monsters that can be either visible or invisible. So if they have a choice, you've got to declare immediately. And then you resolve any immediate effects. Then we have the cosmic battle. <laughs> Tell the value of your threat, using the values in the upper left corner of your monster cards, plus any bonuses. Tell your opponent this value. Six. Six. And you have the lower sanity, right? Yep. So each monster uh, in your threat absorbs sanity loss done to your monsters that is battling, one per point list. So I'm going to absorb two of that. So it's going to go to four. Yep. Uh, you have your play around your investigator. Oh, okay. Then determine the order in which the monster should enter absorb the sanity. Chosen to defend counters as much as possible in your remaining points. Uh, now affect defending allies or the investigator. So basically you do four to me, is that right? Yep. Or five, six? That's six total. Minus two is four. Monster gets buried. Yep. And then I take four sanity. You got it. And then I think these get buried, right? They get buried. 
Anything that was used. Whoosh. Summon the, the deep ones. Yeah. Why are Mother you playing Hydra. that deck? Why am I not playing you that deck? You should be playing this deck. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then we go to the end of the round, where we can discard, but we got to stay within our minimum. So, so I'm here, basically, I realized that there's a bunch of cards in my hand I didn't need for my win condition that's in my hand. So I'm basically just, that's why I wanted to end the round. It's like, if you have more stuff you want to play, I'm just trying to tempo out of this turn, get the stuff in Yeah, play, I didn't have play, much left uh, that mattered. Okay, and then now we lobotomy if you want it. Don't want it. Football cards if you want it. Reshuffle if you want it. And then we draw back up. All right, I stay in the, the Valley of the, of the Kings. You're in the Marsh Reefing Co. Refining Co. Uh, refining Co. Reefing Co. <laughs> is even better. <laughs> Myself and then <laughs> Reefing. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. What an interesting game. Yeah. Ooh, my, my. Steven Knotts, I agree. Holy cow, I think I understood that. <laughs> Take care, Yella. Good to see you. Understood what? Just like the, what we had just done. Yeah. It's like, okay, wait a minute. I don't, it's not, honestly, like, overly burdensome or, or complex compared to some of the games we've been playing. I just don't feel like I have to remember that much. I'm not good at it yet. You're but that's not? fine. Okay, events, spells. This is one of those arrange your hand games. Absolutely. In my mind, at least. Ooh, I've got good allies. Okay, now we're getting somewhere, dude. Now we're getting somewhere. Another resurrection spell, which we don't need. Another Valley of the Kings, probably not useful. Maybe it is. And then some direct sunlight. Okay. So I think I have some of what I need. Let's see what this says. All right, great. I got to read my win condition really quick. <laughs> <laughs> Corrupt Undertaker knows English, knows Arabic and English. That's right. I need more marsh. Yeah, right. I'm in the same, I'm in a similar place. Um, all right, so you have the lower, I have the lower sanity, so I'll go first. I'm going to start with old T.E. Lawrence, a uh, steadfast adventurer that knows Arabic and English. He's here. Oh my goodness, this is hilarious. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> That's so funny. This is actually hilarious. Um, all right, first things first, I'm the realist. Let's. You Mike, it makes sense. Yeah, you just got to get used to it. Now, one of the questions I have uh, for you, Mike, that you might know, I have the Sun Worshipper that says travel by camel to three different locations in the Middle East. Does that just mean that in my story deck, I need to end up with three locations and three camel cards to fulfill that? Or does the game keep track of, I played this camel to go here, then I played this camel to go here, then I played this camel to go here? Also, a question. If... I played a copy of the Esoteric Order of Dagon. Is there a way for me to get back there? Like, do I need to draw another one? Mm, I've got. I've seen three of the same location in my deck, at least. Yeah, that's helpful. I think. I'm, I'm curious about that. So first thing I'm going to do. Just one camel, three locations, or two camels, three locations. That's it. Okay. Right, okay. Here's so two different, do. lightly different answers. What's up? I'm going to summon uh, threats. What? Three cards. They're joined. It's a lot of threats. You got big old weird... Oogly boogly. Oogly boogly indeed. <laughs> That's what that reminds me of. Travel by camel to three different... Look at the sun worshiper. We can look at that together. This is what I'm... I'm on an epic quest to, to worship the sun here. Uh, so we've got travel by camel to three different locations in the Middle East and meet two allies who speak Arabic. Thank you, Night to the Stars. Appreciate the camera. It's backwards right now, but... Okay. So then, my next thing I've got to do is... She's got the Play another camel. Okay. Okay. They just need to be in the story deck or in play. Okay, great. Okay. 
One camel per mention on story card. Okay, now I'm getting it. There it is. Okay, I have a camel in there. I have three different locations in there. One, two, three. Different locations in the Middle East. Let's see what else we need to do. I need to meet two allies who speak Arabic. That's one that speaks Arabic. I don't have any other ones. Okay. And then we need to learn of the coming drought. Let's see if the drought is in my hand. I know exactly what I need to do. <laughs> I figured it out. This is great. And you, fit, you just. I actually think this is a hilariously good time, because it's a race, right? It's a yep. race that you can also you have this other win condition where you could maybe make your uh, opponent's investigator go insane, um, and it's a total tempo thing. It seems mm -hmm. very uninteractive at first, and then all of a sudden you recognize that there's a, like this weird like sideways tempo thing going on that I've never seen in a game before. Well, it's you also are doing that thing where. Uh, I'm learning now that a lot of these games were doing this back then, that the the interaction I have with you is just trying to throw you off of your story-building game. Yeah. <laughs> just like uh, Middle Earth. Well, and like, the imagine if you know what your, like, two or three or four win conditions are. Yeah. And like, early on, if you don't see a win condition, you're kind of like probably building towards both a little bit, like two or three different ones. And then like, once you draw the one you want to start going for in the cards, and you're like setting up for this certain win condition, like, it's hilarious. All right, I'm going to play the uh, Chant of Thoth on my tome here. I'm going to figure out what that does later. It, it's got a minus one in red, which makes me think that I pay that now rather than later when I cast the spell. So spells, you, you only ever pay the cost when Why you cast it. Why is it red? It's because you literally pay that every time you cast it. Why is this one yellow? Is this like a stay and play effect or something? I don't think so. They're very different. And there's a reason they're different. Everything else that's in red is paid immediately. So a spell that has a little red icon instead of a yellow icon has got to mean something. Unless it's just a misprint. <laughs> yeah, you know, you could always have that. <laughs> you could always have Joe that. Joe Salat saying, is the standard intro kit for this any good out of the box? I have no idea. These are decks built by uh, Mike, uh, who's in the chat right now hanging out. Super thank, uh, su a lot of thanks to him for putting this together. Super thank. Super thank. I uh, super thank. What do you think? Anyways, uh, so I don't know about the starter decks, but uh, this is pretty fun. Okay. Uh, each tomb is also coated with one or more. Match the icons. Okay, so can I cast that? Yes, I can. Both icons match. All right, I got that. Yeah, of course. That's why you build the decks like you do. Uh, you may join. Yeah, once spells are played, they can be returned to your hand. Do not pay spell sanity costs. Yellow pentagrams when the spell... What Do I have a red somewhere? Spell is pray from your hand to the tome. Okay. Maybe we're just going to assume it's the same as everything else. Okay. Maybe there's other cards that reference the color of that. That's, that's actually a normal thing. Where it's like, if this has a yellow cost, do this other benefit. Maybe that's what this means. Uh, yeah, maybe yellow means it's because it says some spells have an instant effect and others have an effect that continues over time. So this says immediately, so maybe this is an instant effect with the red, and then this means something else, bring an ally back from the dead. Hmm. Huh. Okay. So I played the Chant of Thoth. You ready for this? I'm ready. I'm going to play a card called the Inn's Mouth Look. She's got the look. <laughs> so it affects an opponent's ally. Check this out. <laughs> you going to give me the, the stare I'm suspicious eye? that something weird is going on in Inn's Mouth. <laughs> And what I discover is that you're a fish person. Uh, I move an opponent's ally to his or her threat. So it goes to your threat area. Okay. Uh, face down. Ally functions as a lesser independent monster for the remainder of this round. Bury that ally after combat is concluded. Bury this card once the ally has been moved. So I'm going to put this here. I turn you into a fish, so now you're going to be an <laughs> enemy against me. Nice. And then at, during the combat phase, I'm going to have to fight against it. Yeah. And then it's going to go face down under, and my card's going to go face down under. Okay, it's so it'll buried. be a part of the story. Yeah. You had a fish fish person huh. among us, and I found them out. I had a fish person. It was there all along. Um, okay. What up, Jesse? This is Throwback Thursday. We're playing the Mythos CCG from 1996, based on the infamous and famous world of Lovecraft. I'm going to run out of sanity, like, quickly. Yeah, if these attacks are any, any kind of good, you're going to be out of here. How do I get more sanity? Uh, a lot of locations have a positive sanity value. Mm-hmm. 
I'm just going to keep cruising, man. We'll see what happens. I'm going to cast Resurrection. Bring an ally card back from the past because I'm controlling the... Uh, I'm controlling the uh, Grecian vessel. I'm with it. So I'm okay, gonna... so you're flipping the spell face down when you use it. Yeah. And Abdul Al-Zarahad comes in. If you can give me a token there, uh, maybe the clue token would be fine. He actually comes back in, which is absolutely just great, with the following. Uh, place two pennies on the ally card to indicate living dead status. I also love that they just say place two pennies. Yeah. Like, if that's what you have. You get pennies. <laughs> So, resurrected allies count as living dead. Place two pennies on the ally card to indicate living dead status. Alternatively, with the Grecian uh, vessel, Grecian Lekythos can play an ally card from the past. So, I think they're still living dead. Because, I'm, I mean, I'm bringing them out of a... Well, this card that you can use the resurrect to play an ally card, you must be in the proper location. And do you have to so. pay for that when you use that spell, or do you pay for it later somehow? I think I do it now. I think I do... I pay two when I cast it. Oh, my, my. So I've got a living dead ally back into the game here. What's up, Jesse? <laughs> All right, mine? Yeah. I'm going to stay in N's mouth, and I'm going to play the Marsh Mansion. No. Oh. Same thing. All my marshes get plus one stack. Okay. Let's play George Birch over here. He can come in. Oh, it's got to be in a cemetery. Oh, no. I don't have any cemeteries. You better get to the cemetery. I don't have any. Okay. Then next up, instead, I'm going to use the Chant of Thoth. Uh, it's going to cost me one. You really are going to run out. Yeah, dude. i got to find stuff that's going to buff it. And there's no mechanic to buff it, is there? There's, a, there's mechanics that give you sanity, for sure. I'm just saying, like, if they're not on my cards, you need to go find them. Probably, yeah. Immediately discard up to four cards and replace them with new cards from the Mythos deck. So basically, discard four and grab four. One, two, three, four. Oh, hey, you're at a cemetery right now. Oh, I am? The tombstone. Oh, right on. Okay, I'll do that next. <laughs> One. Duh. Genius. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh, a Yithian, Zach. Ah, I hate Yithians. I have nightmares about Yithians still. I don't like what you're doing right now. Uh, it's just as devastating as you expect. This is insane to see like some of the source material in its, in its raw form. Yeah. All right, mine. Yeah. I'm gonna play Raymond Lagrasse. He's steadfast. He's a police detective. He knows English and French. Man, these people know lots of languages. Is it is that is that normal? I don't know. Uh, if, if you would make me lose a tome or an artifact, I can bury him instead. Okay. Just remember that. Is he going to save your tomes? Okay. Man, how does this Yithian work? That is just insanity. Then we're going to go... Let's put... Uh, oh. Let's put Khalil out here. There's plus one sanity on his card. Six. There you go. I'm back in business. All right. Khalil Karim, steadfast scholar and knows Arabic. All right. Mine? Yeah. Go Pass. for it. Your computer is asleep, Zach, apparently, in M some capacity. Impossible. <laughs> is not. It's right here. <laughs> this one? All right. And then, no, it shouldn't be. Did I get a message? I'll check. And then lastly, so you're going to pass again, maybe. So I've got to deal with this. Don't like this. Don't like this at all. Bryce, can you hear me? By the way, shout out to Bryce and Jonathan uh, slamming it from home, making these cards pop up. All right, I'm going to play George Birch. Uh, oh, I see. Bryce has left the call. Can you hear me? Yeah, he's got you back. I, I see him. I don't think he can hear me because his face is not moving. <laughs> you guys would love this setup. Can this you hear me? 
Can you hear me? <laughs> no, I've never seen somebody look more genuinely confused in my entire life than Bryce right now on the computer screen. Can't hear me. <laughs> all right, I'm going to try this again, bro. You keep doing your thing. All the courage on these laptops, and somehow every day it's just a struggle to get somebody to be heard on a Google Hangout. Yeah. It's like this is the easiest thing ever. I've never had an issue with this in my entire life using a computer. At some point, I'm just going to uh, start calling people. On just walkie-talkie it? <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yeah, Vampire Eternal Struggle looks great. Still can't hear me. I'm going to guess it's on your side. Vampire is definitely high on my list of games to get on the table from the 90s. Let me pull this up, too, for everybody here. Um, actually, I guess we can't. Bryce can't hear us yet, so we'll, we'll pull it up later. But there's this card that says Yithian Mental Contact. It's insane. So once I get a chance, I'm going to pull that up like crazy. Um, but it's an event, and so if anybody out here knows how this works, it says your opponent changes his or her mind and buries the cards that were just played or whose orientations were altered, except adventure cards. Ignore any effects they would have had. So is that basically if Zach plays a card or readies something, I can respond by playing the Yithian Mental Contact, and instead it has to get buried? Which would be cool. That would make a lot of sense to me. Honestly. We've Nothing? Also got... All right. Check your phone. Uh, you, you have an iPhone, Bryce? He can't hear you. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> just call. Just call well, I can call from the computer, oh. which would be better, so I don't have to call from my phone and the go files crazy. files are in the computer. Don't you know? We've got to get these pops going because this art is too good not to pop up. Yeah, we're going to get there. You look like a true uh, executive at an old company. What's this? How does this button work? What's this spreadsheet? I can I print this out? I told you the story about the boss I had that uh thank you mike we spent literally i mean owner of the company we spent like eight months developing this digital analytics platform for internal use yeah you could literally choose a choose a, a time zone you could i think i can hear now can you hold on can you hear me can you hear me now can you, can you hear me bryce <laughs> great all right, uh, this thing is like, you could, it was so powerful, and there were literally eight people manually making these reports that just didn't even have to do it anymore. You could pick a time zone, pick a client, wow. and bam, here's the stuff. Tons of money spent on this thing because there's eight full time jobs going to this one right, right, simple right, thing. Right, right, right. You know, Mitt Romney every year. <laughs> and so the first time it's being presented to him, I was leading that project. Uh, presents it, I'm like, name a client. And he says the name of a client. And then, like, choose a time to, time range. So, literally, if he'd wanted this three-year report for this company before, yeah. it was like a four-week wait, <laughs> and someone had to go manually do so all this stuff. So had to make it, yeah. And he does it, and it pops up immediately on the screen. And basically, he then gets very concerned because he's like, "Where's the print button?" <laughs> and I'm like, "You just have an iPad there, a computer. Like, what do you print it for?" And he's like. And it'd be like a 10-page report. you got to file it. And it's like, don't you I need to be able to print this, don't you know? Print it and file it. Oh, also, I'm looking, we're looking at Battletech next week, guys. Battletech uh, is near and dear to my heart, and I'd, I'd love to play it. So, Bryce, if you're back in the game, see if you can pull up the old Yithian, um, Yithian Mental Contact, which has... Look at the art on this card. Woo! Look at that. That makes this me is, appreciate the Yithians more. This is the kind ultimately. of art that I feel like no one would even dare try to do today. It's not even possible. But maybe it's because of my age and my, where I grew up and whatnot, but like, that is cool to me. It brings back a lot of, lot of memories. In like one. a crazy weird way. That brings back some memories for old Steven. People are excited about Battletech. Right? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, okay, so I played the ally. You had just passed previously. So you passed. I played George Birch. Pass again. All right. Let's party. Let's party indeed. All right, first things first. I'm the realist. Combat. Commit all monsters. They're all coming to town. Okay. This one is as well. This fish man. <laughs> Oogly boogly. Ally functions as a lesser. Bury the ally after combat. Bury this card. Okay. So there's that. And then uh, we do the... Do we do the allies now too? Oh wait, I have the list here. So commit all monsters. Okay, then commit any allies. So George is going to be in this one. Um... And as long as I've met these allies, I don't think it matters for this that they're alive. No, you just have to, they just have to have been in. Okay, well then I can burn them. 
I'm, I'm doing all four of my steadfast allies. Okay. I'll keep Khalil around. Phyllis Master says, singing Yithian's praise? What universe have I fallen into? <laughs> I do hate Yithians. It's not personal. All right, reveal my monsters. Yeah, reveal the monsters. All right, I have Shugoth. Shugoth. Oh, Shugoth. he's like a real thing. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a. I fought him in Arkham, one. I think. Uh, so I lose two sanity when he comes That's right, out. You do. I also have Father Dagon, so Oof. I lose another sanity. And then I have a, another deep one. Doesn't just, cost me anything. You're gonna table me Gets here. Gets plus one point of value if my investigator has this jewelry. So let's do that. This gets plus one of value if I have Father Dagon. How about that? Or if I have the jewelry. Um, so I am currently at a... I think the Innsmouth look is literally an Arkham card that's been spoiled in the Innsmouth preview article. It's like a known thing. Apparently there's also a uh, Lovecraftian themed band that did a song called the Innsmouth look. I color me surprised. Yeah. Uh, so I'm at 11, 13. All right, give me some tokens here. Plus one if I'm at a cemetery. And spells, which isn't going to matter. Okay, so we've got everything committed that's going to commit, right? Yep. Cast spells. You got any spells you want to cast? Nope, I'm not a tome guy. <laughs> I don't have any spells either. You're just throwing fish at me. <laughs> Oogly boogly. All right, then we reveal monsters. So now is when we would reveal them. Yeah, you have to cast spells before you know what's coming. And now it's the cosmic battle. So what are you at? 6, 11, 12, 13? Yep. Is that right? So I'll soak three of that. Get buried. You can have your end's mouth look back. Uh, three of 12. Down to nine. <laughs> Wait, Oogly 11 12 is 13. So I'm down to 10. Because you got plus one and plus one, right? Yeah. 10, 4, 5, 6, 7. There was something. This. While this tome is in play, living dead are increased by one. So this is eight. Mm, nice. he's a zombie, man. Yep. All right, so eight from ten, so a two is left over. Yep. Is that right? You so got I'll it. I'll take two. And these all get buried. Woo! What a story we're weaving. <laughs> we are telling a story. I got this party going around town. <laughs> all right, then we discard everything down to the minimum. I'm only going to keep... Uh, I have to keep three because I have my reduction. My minimum is minus one from someone. That's when you know you're playing a 90s card game. I was like, there's a card I know that affects Wait, this. At one point, something said something, and I had to remember it. <laughs> there it is. Arthur Monroe, minus one. How about that? Um, drought. <gasps> oh, direct sunlight. That's what I was supposed to keep it for. Ah! It was on the card the whole time. I bet I get another one. Drought, direct sunlight, camel. Temple Vampire. How close are you to completing a, a story? Though? Very close. I'm very close too. It's a tempo game, and we're racing to the end. You know what I mean? I do. Camel, camel. There's my. I, I am feeling good. How are you feeling? Two camels complete. Oh my goodness. One, two, three, four, <gasps> five, <gasps> six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. No! Oh, wait, and then spells flip up. Yep. Okay, okay, I'm with you. I get it. I think I understand. <laughs> the Wizards that Climbs the Library says, it's funny these guys haven't read uh, Lovecraft, but they've played loads of games based on it. Yeah. Not wrong. I think it's, at this point, I don't know if that's abnormal anymore. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Oh, my goodness. Can I show you this card because it's beautiful? It's the Conan Akut Island Private Hospital. Mm. C O N A N I C U T. Look at this art. Oh my gosh, how good is that? Oh my gosh, hold on a second. <laughs> that is legendary. Is that a real card? Lord. These look like, this is exactly what we would have done as kids. Like, 
I think the people that made this game are on that card. This is exactly what we would have done as kids. This is absolutely hilarious. The dude holding like the fake cocktail glass and maybe a fake cigarette as well. Not even the real thing. Do you have that up, Brett? Kind of, yeah, you do. Oh Brian my Lung says, LOL. Can you believe w this? <laughs> oh my god. I have that exact same thing, but it's a different, uh, that's a clearly a mechanic, the sanitarium. I, I have one that I'm about to play as well. Um, so I have lower sanity, I go first. That's so perfect. I really also like the fact that the player with less uh, sanity goes first. Hospital for the insane. Oh wait, do I, I don't travel there immediately, right? It comes, if it's not the same city, then it comes in sideways? Yeah, because this isn't a city, this is the country. Yeah. So as long as, that's the one thing we, we learned, is this region has to match, and then it comes in sideways, but if it was a city to a city in the same region, then you would be able to play it face up. Got you, because we're in the Innsmouth region. Yeah, so I have to go to the country to the city. So I'm gonna play it there sideways. All right. And so once I get there, I'll gain five sanity. And I'm pretty sure literally, like that was your turn. The next, your next turn it flips up and you get the sanity. I think I have to literally spin an action to do it because it says rotate a location card. I don't know why else you would, I think that's spinning an action to actually enter the city. Does that make sense? Is that not how you I don't know. Like, with does it? it take you two actions to do that? Like one to play it, one to get there? I think so. One to play it and then one to actually turn it face that, up. That and could totally it. be correct. That's the way it seems like it would work. Yeah, Tony says that's correct. All right. Mine? Yeah. It's kind of like in Middle Earth where you're outside and then you have to keep going to actually enter. Yeah. I'm going to play Robert Marsh. He gets plus one. Cool. Because of that. that card. Yeah, Robert Marsh looking great. All right. Then I'll travel here, gain five sanity. So I'll go up to nine. And this is the cool tempo part of it. So I have to just sit here and do nothing for the next turn. It's not considered a pass. So then you essentially get two things in a row. Now, if you went pass, pass, turn's over. Isn't that fascinating? Just reading. <laughs> Is it an action to play an adventure card to complete it? Yeah. I think so. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then what cards. happens assuming I do that? You score it. But like what and happens we keep to going. the round? We keep going on the round? Yeah, we have to get to 20. I just didn't know if it was like that's the end of a round or something. Maybe maybe it is. Adventure cards. Um, uh, adventure cards provide a recipe that you must play in order to qualify to score victory points. Uh, the words can do all of that, yeah. Uh, the cards played to satisfy adventure must be your cards, of course. Each capitalized word must be matched by a separate card. Uh, that's really good. You must come across it during the game, have it in your hand, play it as a turn, score the points, gain sanity at the moment you play this card. In the basic game, this ends the game. But I don't so think the first score. I'm not going to do that in the basic nope. game. We're playing to twenty. All right, you ready? Yeah. For the first score of the game, stand against the order. You and two steadfast allies, I have a bunch out. My four steadfast allies. Oof. Uh, greatly impressed by the strange magnetic charisma of Barnabas Marsh. Here he is. Uh, and Robert Marsh, leaders of the order. You soon notice evidence of the inn's mouth look. You remember that card? Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. I don't I just want to make sure I have it here. Um, stealthily investigate. Uh, stealthily investigation of the Marsh Mansion and Marsh Refinery. This was my current location. That was my previous location. That's so cool. Reveals convincing evidence of their terrible customs and foul plot for humankind. In a desperate attempt to rid the world of their menace, you dynamite the esoteric <laughs> Order of Dagon, which is here, <laughs> and score the points. <laughs> nice. Touchdown. Very nice. <laughs> so here's what I don't know. I believe I stay at my current location, and then everything else goes away. It says, reset the story deck, shuffle in your discard, then keep going. So, reset the story deck. Do I stay at my current location? Probably. I, yeah, I that, think that, that only the makes case. sense. That only then makes sense. I, this, all this goes away. Your hand, I think you keep. Yeah, and my character's in play. Yeah, everything in play is good, and then you shuffle everything back in. So, story and discard goes into deck, shuffle in, and then we keep playing. All right, yeah, Tony is on it. Current location stays. Look, we got that intuition, that 90s intuition here. Now, the thing that's crazy to me, because I know I have another copy of that card in my deck, 
You have two of those same stories? Yeah. Huh? So, like, I already have the marshes and the steadfast out, um, but I have to go back. Uh, well, I wonder if anything that you use on the story... You can't is, do it twice? ...is getting buried or something. You know what I mean? Like, you have to... You have to put them in the story deck to complete the thing. Yeah, I don't know. Dreadnought's saying, I don't understand what's going on, but man, this looks interesting. Uh, to give you kind of ah, some... You may not complete the same adventure more than once in an advanced mythos game. Okay, there you go. Yeah, so I can't do that again. Okay. Uh, to give you kind of a very quick rundown, we're each investigators, essentially. I'm the proud Prussian <laughs> submariner. Steven is... Uh, the mad German inventor. And our goal is to score 20 points or drive the other person insane. Um, I'm at 7 sanity. He's at 9. We started out at... F I started at 15. Max is 20. So we're kind of halfway home. We have allies and stuff here, but we're trying to basically tell, tell a story. So this card I just played, Stand Against the Order, you'll notice capital words, all, all caps words. I basically have to have those either in play or in my story deck. When you play, play a card or it goes away, it gets buried under this. And if it's all there, I can take an action to play this card and score the points. That's super cool. Kevin Sage asking, Flesh and Blood looks extremely different anyway. Have we seen it? Absolutely. We've played it a few times. We've streamed it a few times. We're uh, pretty interested in it, and we're trying to work something out on the game. Uh, get some decks in and whatnot, and stay and get tuned some on that one. So we will definitely uh, have something to say about that uh, one soon. Also, when I resolve stand against the order, it gives me four sanity. That's right. Okay, and so then I have to do nothing because I recovered my five at the sanitarium. So it's back over to you. I understand now more than I ever have. Like, I feel like we could jam through this again pretty quickly. Yeah. Because, like, knowing that your story deck gets shuffled back in, like, you can't do some of a quest and then complete one and then complete the second half of that quest. Yeah, So you yeah. only ever want to really be playing the cards for this particular quest, not you trying to You don't want to waste your all. time with yeah. that. And yeah, so yeah. the other thing is, like, I know I need to complete a different story now. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what it is. Yeah, I assume it relates to all the other cards in my deck. <laughs> you can look through it too if you want, because like, you would know you built I, the deck. I have no know. clue, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just find that. Yeah, Jesse, the cameras flip. That that's not on purpose. That's because Zach and I are here by ourselves in a studio that we tried to set up uh, by ourselves, and we don't have quite the hardware that we need. So we've got some more stuff coming in, so we can get the camera up out over the shot and looking this direction as well. But right now we just can't do it. It's hanging up there with a dream and a rainbow and a couple of screws. And we're just not going to touch it uh, so that it doesn't accidentally fall down on us. What are you thinking now? I'm just reading through my cards. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, man, I could have totally wrecked you with that. That would have been hilarious. Ah! Oh, Mike said he recommended playing the first game of the adventure cards pulled out. Mm, and you can just play them as soon sense. as you accomplish them. That's, that's solid. Yeah, I, I read through those notes. Those were super helpful to give me, like, bearings on where I was at. follow them. Read them, though. <laughs> That's how I knew certain things. <laughs> okay, I know what I need to do. I just don't know if I have the strength to do it. Now I know what I need to do. Now is the moment. Mmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I get it. I get it, indeed. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let me make, also, I'm going to make sure that this is correct. And it, this will tell me everything. OK. That's what I needed. You can only have one of that? OK. All right, hit me. I'm on Mythos, man. Reading. Mm. I got this handful of cards ready to go. All right, let's play Jeremiah Brewster plus one if I'm uh, if I have the jewelry of the deep ones, which I do. I'm glad I have that in my opening hand. Very cool. Okay, I'm gonna go to the Great Temple at Karnak. I'm going to eight. Sanity. I can use the gate more than once while Dawn of a New Day is in play, but I must pay the card's sanity cost each gate use, so I would pay one sanity to use it multiple times. Noted. Um, I forgot about the gates, actually. That joining thing is good. Yeah. 
Jeremiah is literally a bullfrog. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um, let's look at this Conan a Cut Island Private Hospital again, uh, just because the art's amazing. Uh, but secondly, I want to know some things. So it's got the green background. <laughs> it's so good. It's yeah. got the green background. Yeah. I'm in Innsmouth. It's got the green background. Does that matter? What does that mean? It means you're in the same region. So if I want to play this, what do I do? Does it come in sideways? It comes in sideways, yeah. All right, then it's your turn. All right. All right, I'm going to play Nyarkatholeptos. Comes into play face up because it's an outer god. Nyarlathotep. Nyarlathotep. Outside gate location, new moon. Outside? This is not outside. It's inside. He tried. He can't go into the city. You fool. Uh, okay. I'm going to put this... Down. Mine? All yours. So then this readies, right? Yeah, it, if you choose to use an action to ready I will it. do it. Okay. So I heal five, but then it says, uh, I must spend next turn in therapy, playing no cards and not passing. I remain here for one turn, and I can bury... I can remain here for one turn and bury a phobia. Right. Okay, so you're stuck there. I'm going to get two actions in a row. Nyarlathotep. <laughs> uh, apparently Tony says you also have to have New Moon in play to play that card. Yeah. I see now. Okay, so I get two in a row here. Um, first, I'm going to do the Chant of Thoth. It's going to cost me one sanity, seven, and that's going to discard cards and draw. So I'll discard four, one, two, three, four, don't need that one anymore, and then I'll draw four. Two, three, four. Okay, and then you got to do nothing. Yep. And then second, I'll play Drought. No location bears the water symbol while this card is in play. Bury any storm event in play. Bury this card if a storm event is played. So we're in a Drought. That's bad for me. Uh, I will pass. Sam Warrior, you're completely right. You're passing? Yep. Well then, Zach, I'm playing the Sun Worshipper. Ah! Okay, so we're gonna try to resolve this adventure. I think I'm there, I didn't double check. But I'm gonna pop up my story deck and I'm gonna look at whether or not I've done everything. So I've got a travel by camel. There's my camel to three different Middle East locations. We've got, of course, the Great Temple. We've got the hospital. We've got the Valley of the Kings. Plenty of Middle East locations, and a mosque, and the Muski. Wow, you went everywhere, man. We've got them all, you guys don't even understand. What was your current location? Um, current location was the temple. Temple at Karnak. Okay. Okay, so I traveled to different locations. I met two allies who spoke Arabic. It's going to be T.E. Lawrence, talked about on the stream yesterday for, uh, or for Arkham, I thought. And then Abdul Alzarahad, no, Alizrad. Abdul Alizrad. Okay, so I met two that spoke Arabic. They spoke of an ancient legend foretelling of a coming drought which is right here, where the searing eye of God will be revealed in a shaft of direct sunlight. Oh, no, I think I forgot the direct sunlight. Ah! That means you lose. I lose. I'm just Using a second camel card, hasten to the temple and summon a fire vampire. Okay, so, so I can't again. do this yet. You're, so, you're on the verge of greatness. That's on the verge of greatness. Okay, so instead of playing that... I will do... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Oh, these need to go. 
I will have to do, and these are all in here. Something useful. What's it gonna be? Because you just passed, right? Yep. Uh, and this has been summoned from, there's a drought out. Um, I'll play Pipes of Madness as a spell. No, I need some allies in case you do weird stuff. Indeed. Play that ally there. Faraz Najir. Such a cool ally. He's a merchant. Corrupt, though. <laughs> Mine? Yeah. Uh, let's pass. You Com did it. Commit monsters. All right. Commit monsters. Consider them committed. Commit allies. Let's go. These four again. They're all plus four because of... If you commit all four of them, only the ones that soak sanity go away? Yeah. Is that right? Okay. Well, we've got a fire vampire who's invisible during the day. Ugh. And it's a drought. Add one if you're at a forest, which you are. Uh, so go ahead and take four. Down to 12. <laughs> My allies do nothing. It's just dancing past them. <laughs> All right. Just vampire stuff. And then uh, lose sanity, bury losses in the story deck, etc. End of the round, discard. I'm going to discard. I'm going to keep my minimum of four. I'm going to discard the rest because I don't. So if I only have one card in, do I have to pay to shuffle, you think? Or do I just get a free reshuffle? I have no clue. I'm going to pay one to shuffle my discard into my. The I'll bet you have to. The chat will let us know if that's otherwise. I'll bet you have to. It's like basically saying if you run out of deck, pay a sanity. Just like in Arkham. Man, sometimes you just can't find the number on... A die? The die. Uh-oh. All oh. right. Direct sunlight. Come at me. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why is this happening? I did nothing. I think I know. I think I'm, I'm tempted to... Tempted to uh, hear me? blame somebody. Can you hear me? <laughs> Can you hear me now? <laughs> I can't hear you. Yeah, none of the stars. We're diving into the mythos two days in a row. That's exactly right. I'm going to assume you can hear me. I can't wait for uh, the LCG, Arkham LCG tomorrow. All right, let me organize this madness. Wow, this is insane. Okay, we'll do that. Then draw 13. Them's the beats. One, two, three, four, five, Did six. Did we decide seven, that you eight, had to nine. pay to, to shuffle? Yeah. Bummer. I, I paid to shuffle back in, yeah. All right, and then I have the lowest sanity. Oh, it's a bummer too, because if you complete your thing, you would get a natural reshuffle. Yeah. You, you should always probably be able to do that if you, but I discarded this early. I was like, I don't know what What's this What's the does. daylight? Uh, okay, so my first action is going to be direct sunlight. It is day. Bury any night or day event in play. So this is a day event, would, would we say? No, it doesn't say day on it. It's just a drought. Uh, bury this card if a day or night event is played. So it's a drought. There's direct sunlight. You can see where this is going. It's a, it, The story writes itself. I've seen this movie before. It writes itself, really. <laughs> okay, now have at the... I see. Monkey Boy, I agree with you. I really like the idea of the game. Um, he said, could be reliant with some streamlining and better templating. Give it the old Netrunner treatment. All right, you ready? Yeah. Discover secret cash. Emergency cash, if you Immediately will. play an artifact or tome card, regardless of current locations or whatever, Minots. <laughs> Sphere of Nath. Take the top card of your opponent's story deck and discard it. That one. What? If card revealed is not a location, bury it. Is that a location? No. So we bury it under until you get to a location. Okay. So I basically yeah. send you back. Fair enough. Back um, to the musky? This cost me two. Well, I thought the Great Temple was a. Uh, if forever. card revealed is not a location, et cetera, repeat until, et cetera. Then bury this card. Buried. Ugh. Okay, well, that's a bummer. So now I can't do this. I see now the adventures are worth 21 points if I do them all three, which makes sense. That I have a nine you. out, and I might have a 12 coming. That would win you the game, yeah. That makes sense. 
Um, okay, well, let's go digging. E ain't saying, did you ever play the Call of Cthulhu CCG or LCG? I did. I played Would've the LCG. To, yeah. I had the core set. Um, I bought it, and then the game died like a month later. <laughs> I've been hearing good things about it, uh, and so I wanted to check it out and how you played it. But I played a couple times, and then it kind of went away. What's this? This was the event you played? Oh, yes, Search I your... Play an artifact or tome? What was that? That was an artifact. That triggered my ability thing? That was the thing that made me discard. Do you have to use this? This stays in play, right? The artifact? It says... Like it's an artifact here, or does it say discard well, it to do it? It says thing? bury it. Okay. Like when you play it, it says take the top card of. I right? think you have to play the artifact, and then you have to bear. Then you have to use the artifact. Use one artifact as an action. Oh, okay. So, it's so be then you're back at that first. location. Yeah. So I get to do it anyway. <laughs> Which I like because it means you always know what your opponent can do, just like yeah. Netrunner. Uh, similarly, I guess not just like. Well, now I get my Sun Worshipper. <laughs> Jesse says Zach killed Call of Cthulhu LCG confirmed. <laughs> Sun Worshipper. If only I had that power. Scoring it. Cancel I've got it. the camels. I've got the Middle East locations. I've got allies speaking Arabic. It is a drought. There is direct sunlight happening. We're at the temple, and we have summoned a fire vampire to Uman Ra, the sun god. All right, you did it. I'm officially a Sun Worshipper. So story deck, discard pile, shuffles back in. Tony and Mike, you guys are invaluable on the stream. Thank you for being here. Agreed. All right, what now, Bun? Uh, that's a good question. Let's. It's funny because you could also just like go for the kill, right? And just like end the game. Absolutely. But even by but ending I... the game with my sanity loss, does it go to points or do I automatically lose? I think it goes to points. I think it goes to points. Yeah, yes. so at this point, I don't want you to go insane. It's just a way to end the game. You could make yourself go insane, I think. Is that true? Head by points. Oh, no way. No way. Let me look up sanity. <laughs> That's insane. To the printed rule book. Sanity. Oh. Oh. You see, look at this. Green pentagrams in, in, indicate sanity gain. Red indicates sanity loss and yellow, the cost for when a spell is cast. So I wonder if that means old Chant of Thoth, you lose when you play the spell, but then it's, you can cast it for free because it's not yellow. Or it could be a typo. <laughs> for location, yep. Yeah. Tally, may gain more. Uh, any points above 20 or lost, and points below zero are ignored, right? Right, 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 right. Okay, so it tells us that we have it, but not what happens. All right, mine? Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, play the in's mouth yeah. look and turn him into a fish. What? Yep. Why are you fishing my guys? Also, your current location disappeared. It sure did. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. <laughs> it sure did. All right. Great temple. I'm still at the temple. I just finished the sun worshiping. <clears throat> Mike and Tony, did you guys know each other before this? Or did you guys just find a new best friend? <laughs> In the basic game, Zach, one adventure complete or losing all sanity points, whichever occurs Lose first, you the game. Is, is the game, yeah. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's a, it's a rush to the end, though. Oh, cool. So, Tony, hello, all new best friend. When it ends, add the value for the investigator's completed adventure plus their remaining sanity. So basically, if I, I could, drove you insane right now, I would, I would win. Yeah, because you have I've, ten plus nine, right? Yeah, you'd be at nineteen. That's, that's good. Okay, now we're now we're cooking with gas. We man. are cooking with gas. Okay, now, steadfast, corrupt, tome, skull, resurrection. Well, those are all easy. Now it's now it's let's go. Um, okay. Okay, all right. Question in the chat. So I have Sefton Asylum. Uh, I get how it's working mostly, but it says 
then replace this card. So you discard this card, replace it from hand, but I put a new location into play. Is that what that is? Okay. Let's play uh, Randolph Carter. What's he up to? I, I know that guy. I think he's an investigator. This guy. He's, uh, he's in uh, the LCG, Randolph Carter. Is he one of the investigator starters? No. I've seen him before. He's somebody's ally, maybe? Uh, anyway, so Randolph Carter comes into play. All right, mine. Uh, Mike, it says, my, your electroshock therapy is a success. Set aside this card and shuffle your story deck, which would be this. Randomly discard. Oh, I get it. Randomly discard one of these and then replace this card. So it's not in there to be discarded. I get it. I'm with it. All right, I'm going to go with the Septon Asylum. Uh, what's going to happen here is if I ready right. it, if I ready it, I'll gain five. But then I have Electroshock Therapy. So at the asylum. <laughs> this goes away at the Asylum, and one of these will get randomly discarded, <laughs> and then this will come back. So go ahead. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? So good. Yeah, Chris Hedvice got it right. Uh, Randolph Carter's a story ally in Dream Eaters. Very cool. I'm going to do something real quick. Okay. Keep going. That's not confusing at all. I may have one here. Grecian, containing the essence of an ancient magus and successfully used the spell and artifact to resurrect a cultist from the past during the new moon. How do I get the new moon? Is that in there? It's got to be a card. Everything's a card. Oh my gosh, there it is. Um... It was, it was warm in here. Pass. No. No. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I will ready this. Mm -hmm. Gain my five sanity. Get some electroshock therapy. That boy needs therapy. <laughs> Grab me one of these. This one. All right. It goes away. He's go back. You needed that one, didn't you, for your story? Not at all. Uh, pass again. End of round. End of round. Any monsters? None. I've got one fish man. How many allies would you like to? Uh... Four. <laughs> All right. Have two coming at you. Well, Faraz got a little fishy. Arthur. Coming at you. He's a six. He's getting buried. Whoo! In the graveyard. Nice. All right, and then now we discard? Discard and discard. And my minimum is four, my max is five. I'm gonna discard these. That boy needs therapy. <laughs> Oh, I've got to discard down. Okay, so my max is five. That's fascinating. I get it. Yeah, you have to discard down to that's five. That's why it's hard. Yeah, the, so that's a, one of a really cool way to do that mechanic. It, there's a minimum and maximum hand size on your investigator, and you have to land mm. equal to or between that number. Um, so if you had ten cards and you want to keep them all, you still have to discard down to five, which is your max, whatever your maximum is. Okay, I'm going to hold five, discard, and gain five. And three more to make 13. That boy needs therapy. Yeah, that's cool. So Randolph Carter is basically a self-insert of uh, Lovecraft in his own stuff. That's cool. Very, very cool. All right, I have lower sanity, Zach. Let's do it. Seeking everlasting life, number one. The search for everlasting life has consumed the imaginations of dreamers for thousands of years. Ignoring the sage advice of two steadfast allies, Randolph Calder and Khalil Kareem, I shun their company and instead fall in with a corrupt ally, the one that you just fished, Faraz Najir. Definitely a corrupt ally turned into a fish man. Uh, <laughs> he's offering the secret of everlasting life. He reveals the existence of this elusive goal, showing you a tome the Unaspreklichen Colton uh, with a skull icon, which you can see right here on the card there. Yeah. Unaspreklichen Colton. 
Here you discover the resurrection spell, which I have there. Your dream is possible. Your goal is within reach. To be continued. And you gain some sanity? Gain one sanity. Insane. So you only need six points to finish this thing out. Finish it out. And I shuffle one back in because... You're at 17 sanity? No. Seven. Oof. I was like, what <laughs> happened? <laughs> I, got I had a strategy here. I got buffed up. <laughs> All right. Mine? Yeah. Yeah, I, this is a clever, this is such a clever little game. Um, I'm going to play the Marsh Refining Co. again. That boy needs therapy. <laughs> it's going to be in my head forever now. I'm going to play New Moon. Oh, no. Discard this day event. All right, I'm going to go here. What happens when you go there? Nothing. Mm, All my marshes are plus one. Excellent. Oh. Oh. This is way more advanced than I thought it was. <laughs> your your win condition? Yeah. That's why that card was in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Sold it. I get it. Okay, I'm going to use the, uh, <laughs> the, the chant. Oh, man. Chant for, uh, for one sanity. That's a nine. And we're going to discard four cards and replace them with other cards. So you discard four, draw four? Yeah. That's good. Don't need that resurrection. Don't need that. Don't need that. And don't really need this. All right, let's draw four. Oh, no duh. OK. All right, mine? Mm-hmm. I'm going to summon these four cards. <laughs> Yikes. Prepare to get oogly boogly. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> oh my gosh. <clears throat> uh, let me see if this works. I'm going to try to play this old Yithian mental contact. Go ahead and read that and see if it works. Do you think you have to bury all those cards that you just played? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Mike, someone, Yithian Mental Contact. Uh, if I just played four joined uh, enemies, does that put all four of them into the barrier? <laughs> That'd be fine. That's hilarious if that's how that works. Maybe that was the counter to join back in the day. You know how this stuff, you can just imagine this developing over time, how weird that would be, where it's like, OK, so we have the base set, and there's probably like six to eight adventures that you know that everybody's trying to do. And then the next thing comes out, and it's like, OK, now we're trying to do these new adventures. Buried. <laughs> nice counter. Lose one sanity.